young woman. World renowned. So far ahead of her time. A force to be reckoned with. A true pioneer in the field of aquatic ecology. Started the whole department of limnology. She set the stage for what you could become. She knew what she wanted to do, and she was going to do it no matter that she was a woman. Ruth Patrick left an extraordinary legacy here in the Philadelphia area. She left some of the greatest material in terms of collections of, for example, diatoms in the Academy. This is the second largest diatom collections in the world. She basically organized the center of that studies here. An institution like the Academy really consists not only of a museum, but there's also a research side. We have bird collections, we have mammal collections. A young woman comes in and wants to expand the smallest of creatures, the diatoms. Diatoms are microscopic algae, unicellular, so it's just one cell, one organism is one cell. They produce one-fifth of all oxygen on the planet. The types of those organisms that live in a body of water is related to the health of that water, if it's polluted or not. She published in 1949 uh, this just incredible insight that the numbers and kinds of species in a river would reflect not only its natural conditions, but the de departure from normal. Her approach to understanding the environment was to go outside, put on her hip boots, and go out into the stream and look and look and look. Not everyone thought that the way Ruth was doing her work was, uh, was appropriate for an academic, and I can only guess how much more difficult it was given that she was a woman. There were a number of years when it was hard for her in the academy, you know, when she would be criticized for wearing lipstick. Because that wasn't what scientists did. So she had to uh, yes, form, form her way. Her role at the academy was as a technician, you know, they were keeping her like in a relatively low position. Dr. Patrick loved to throw parties. Ruth was fun, engaging. Ruth could be the center of a party and I think probably often liked to be the center of the party. We had an opportunity to go to the Poconos to uh, study a lake. Ruth said, I think I'll get on my hip boots and get out into the water. I want to see what's out there. She not only studied what she loved, she focused on the waters of this area and of our region. On top of all the energy and the drive and the perseverance, Ruth was one of the best friends you could possibly have. Ruth's great passion was the environment. She gained her interest in science and streams from her father. He was a lawyer, for God's sakes, but he had a microscope, and there they peered into this beautiful aquatic realm. Ruth Patrick is known for her Patrick principle. You can look at the aquatic communities and not just hone in on the species, but what do they mean about the environment, about the community? She was one of the first to recognize that you could go to a, a body of water, a stream or a lake, and sample the critters that live in it. That technique is used everywhere today. It forms the basis of uh, what every state does to assess their waters to determine if they're polluted or not. She created a new way of using science to solve real-world problems. Ruth Patrick was ahead of her time. 